German Bite. Do you like German Bite? Okay, so that's over there. Yeah, well, it's near Germany, I suppose. It's obvious that one, isn't it? Or is it? Yeah, since it's kind of north, northwest Germany. Um, I've always wondered where north at Syra and south at Syra is, and I can see them on the tea towel. Where, where, where do they come from, uh, Matt or Andrew? Where, where does that name come from? <laughs> at Syra is a, is a tiny island just off of the Norway coast, and um, yeah, the areas are, are split. So half the, half the island is in north at Syra. Um, and yeah, the, the other half is in the other one, um, but it's, it's a very tiny island. Um, but the, the weather in that area is um, sort of particularly uh, interesting, so it needs their own um, sort of area to, to mm. define those um, to define those regions. But yeah, a lot of yeah. the areas have, have changed their names or changed area, or, you know, the size of the area um, you know, over over the years. So at the moment, we've got 31 um, shipping forecast areas. Um, and yeah, uh, long wave covers all of those. But of course, yeah, the the coverage on long wave will will end at the end of this calendar year. Uh, but as you said, it will be uh, still available um, via the Coast Guard um, broadcasting on on their channels and also on uh, FM and BBC Sounds. Yeah. So I mean, north at here, south at here, there's, there's an island there. Rockles, I guess, there's not very much out there. How, how does that get the name? <laughs> Um, there's a there is a small uh, pinnacle that um, is above the surface, uh, which is called Rockall. Um, and in order for that um, to be classed as part of the UK, uh, somebody had to uh, basically sleep on it or stay on there for a certain number of hours, which they did. Um, and it's uh, it's classed as part of the UK, so our territorial mm. waters extend that far out. So uh, Rockall is named after this tiny little rock pinnacle. Um, yeah, out in the uh, out in the Atlantic. You learn something. You learn something new. A dogger. What's the history of dogger? Um, well, that's that's a very shallow area of the North Sea. Um, it's probably mm. anything, you know, maybe only 20 meters deep in places. Um, wow. And it was it was uh, yeah, when in times gone by when uh, the UK was still connected to Europe uh, by land before the sea levels rose. That area was. Um, yeah, very important uh, for uh, as a living place and for you know, hunting. Um, so it's a very shallow area that um, has only recently been sort of drowned by the sea over the last sort of, eight thousand years or so. But it's uh, considering how far offshore it is, it's still very shallow. Yeah, I just wondering because I, I, as you may or may not know, I'm a very amateur pilot, so I'm used to metas and taffs. And I, I've, I am surprised that people still take to the high seas, if indeed they do relying on something like the shipping forecast. You'd think it'd be much more up-to-date and, and modernised than that, and they've got all the computerised weather forecasts and, and stuff coming in. Is, is, that, is that really not the case? Um, well, um, we've... Sorry, go on, Matt. Andrew, you no, go for that one, Andrew. I mean, I, I was going to say, we, we deal with people um, who, who, yeah, they've got all the, all the technology and all the various fancy ways of getting weather forecasts. Um, I grew up in the southwest of Cornwall, in a small fishing village, and and the guys down there, they wouldn't dream of going and making a decision whether they go and fishing without listening to it, and that continues to this day. Um, I'm sat here now, right up on top of the White Cliffs of Dover, looking across the English Channel. Um, there's decisions being made about sailing and racing tonight based on the shipping forecast at lunchtime. So wow. it's very much still being used day in day out. That's remarkable. Look, thanks to you two very much indeed. It's been very much part of our lives. Uh, Andrew Cole uh, and also uh, Matt Pavitt. Um, if you want another treat from BBC Sounds, by the way, I can recommend The Sleeping Forecast. Now, this is a wonderful collection of episodes with soothing music and gentle conversation that helps you drift off at night. And one of these features, uh, Nish Kumar, he's reading famous cricket scorecards. Now, here's a little taster. Chris Wokes, seven overs, one maiden, no wickets for 19 runs. Joe Root, nine overs, one maiden, two wickets for 26 runs. I'm Nish Kumar, and so concludes this sleeping forecast. Well... I have to be honest, Jim, I've not come across that. I mean, you could actually read out one of Geoffrey Boycott's scorecards, couldn't you? That would probably send you to sleep anyway without all of that. But there you are. 
that is a sleeping forecast. You, you didn't realise how soporific you were as a broadcaster. No, well, there, there you go. <laughs> you've, you've got... Come on, give, give, give us a taste of some of your favourites on here. Here we go. Hmm. Viking northeast 40s. Variable 2 to 4. Slight or moderate. Showers, fog patches in Viking. Moderate or good. Occasionally very poor in Viking. That'll be a visibility, wouldn't it? Yes. So you can't see where you're going. Here's one down here. Oh, I have to have this one. German bite. Humber. Mm. Variable. Two to four. Slight. Occasionally moderate at first. Occasional rain. Fog patches for a time. Moderate or good. Occasionally very poor. Very poor. That's when mm. it comes in, doesn't Occasionally it? Occasionally very poor. The drizzle comes in. You can't see anything. Well, there you That's go. That's Manchester for you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've learnt a lot about the shipping forecast. Thanks to those two for coming on. So this, this is the last test match uh, in which uh, the shipping forecast will feature, which is... It's sad, I must say, 30-odd years of doing it, mm. and so the shipping forecast threatened to come in at crucial times in a game. I know Peter Baxter and Adam Mountford, our producers, have thought at times, oh, no, what are we going to do? They're a little bit flexible with it. It can be moved a few minutes here or there. But only later. We, you, you, couldn't, you can't bring it forward. That brings because people, people might miss it. But wasn't people it, hang on. In <coughs> wasn't it a longer version originally? It seems to have been I think trimmed it, up a bit. I think to be honest, I think they read it a bit more quickly these days. All <laughs> oh, right, <laughs> a bit like cricket's exciting. A bit like reading the soccer scores. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Cheers, Jim. There we go. Uh, Here thanks, we go. Uh, thanks Ooh. for all the memories of the shipping forecast. Two fifty for seven. The light not very good. And, uh, but they're carrying on for now. Joel Wilson still got his sunglasses on, which won't help, I wouldn't have thought. 2.50 for seven, and we've got Mark Wood on strike to the first ball of the final session of this first day. And it's clattered away off the back foot as Stark bowls short and runs out to Todd Murphy, who's down there at uh, deep, deep square third man. And they take a single, so 2.51 for seven.